tie away some things and leave them there, but they were happy to be going to another land. Have any of you felt that way before? They were traveling to a land with so much opportunity, a place where they could do anything their minds set their minds to do. Possibility. But the road wasn't easy. See, in their joy of leaving, things did not go the way they thought they would go. Ah, there's always a yip. There's always something to mess up the dreams that we had. Many of you can relate to this because that has been your story. Moving to the United States of America for a land of opportunity to be able to save up money, to educate your family, to bring other family members here to the United States of America. But now, after certain things have gone on back home and certain things are happening in the country where you thought you were free, now you feel confused and maybe you are afraid. Those of you whose land has always been these great United States of America, maybe some of you are looking at the situation and you do not feel at peace. Maybe you feel happy. Maybe you feel possibility. But I ask you to look at yourself and look at your land. We are in a time of distress. We are in a time where people are acting crazy. Do you agree? People do not know how to behave anymore. People are not taught to be respectful. There is disrespect and dishonor all over the land. There is pain, heartache. What will we do? Ah, the Bible has the answer. Someone needs a handkerchief this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, this is your house, and we thank you for allowing us to come and to visit you today. Lord, we ask that the words that are in your holy writ come forth in clarity and understanding. Send your Holy Spirit now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. The children of Israel have seen massive, massive miracles from God to set them free. There is a hope. There is an urgency. There are people who are looking at this God who has done crazy, miraculous things to get his people out of the land, and they are now hitching a ride with some of these people of Israel because say, whatever God has done these things, I've got to be on board. I don't know who this God is, but I know he's stronger than the idol that I've been serving my whole life. There are people who see what God does for you in your life and they will hang on to you because you might be the vessel to help them get to freedom. But that is not always a great thing because even though we are going to the promised land and our promised land is glory where Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you, will I not come back and receive you into myself? I am waiting for that promised land, are you? I am wanting to go home. I don't like it here anymore. Haven't liked it for a long time. There is heartache. There is pain. There is death. There is sickness. There is furious anger. There is theft. There is murder. There is covetousness. There is adultery. And children do not respect their parents. Can I get a witness? This is not the place to be. Commercial for young people. Don't get it twisted. This is not the place to be. Your dwelling and your citizenship is in heaven, not on earth. 
But as we dwell here over the years, and as we sojourn, and as we are waiting to be taken to our land, as we are abiding until he comes, trying to witness and to share and to send money to those so they can learn, so they can be educated in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Those of you who have sent money abroad back to your family know that it's a sacrifice, isn't it? You know about how you work your hands to the bones and how your family members are waiting patiently and earnestly with their hearts beating so they can get a little bit of what you have sent to them, hoping that they too can work their way to education, to work their way to more freedom. You can relate to what these people are going through. Those of you here who have paid for college educations, those of you who have mortgages, who have tried to build your family home, you know what it's like to sacrifice, don't you? You know what it's like to work your hands to the bones and to have a child that doesn't get, I'm just trying to raise you the right way. Why don't you get it? You understand what it's like to sacrifice for something better. These people had seen miracles. And if I was to take time today to ask each and every one of you, you have seen God move in at least one miraculous way, yea, many miraculous ways in your life. Amen? But the journey is not easy. The journey is rough. And when God sets us free and sets us on the road to the land that he has prepared for us, tears are involved. Chapter 14, verse 1 says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and camp before Pehahiroth between Migdal and the sea opposite Baal Zephon. You shall camp before it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say, The children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land, and the wilderness has closed them in. Then I will harden Pharaoh's heart so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. Hmm. And they did so. God tells Moses exactly what is going to happen in the future. He tells them, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. He's going to think, I've got them exactly where I want them. They can't get away from me now. And if you read a little book called Patriarchs and Prophets, they were also thinking about the fact that they had just been embarrassed over 10 times in front of the whole world by this God. And now they could gain respect if they could get this 1 million plus people back and back in chains to work like they were supposed to. Do you think that Moses kept this to himself? Did he keep it a secret? I don't think he did. I think Moses told the people what was going to happen. But when you are walking your way towards freedom, you don't care. If I can't see it, I don't care. Because all I've got is the wind in my sails, and all I can see is the promised land. It's kind of like right after you get baptized and you feel that strength. You feel like you can stand up for the Sabbath day. You feel like, oh, wow, I know that there is no eternal burning hell that God has got 
He's got everything in order. And I know that death is just a sleep. And I know that there are things that are healthier to put in my body instead of pig's feet and fat back and all that other kind of stuff. And you feel like you can just stand up straight. But then something happens. What happens? It's called L-I-F-E. Life doesn't stop just because you come to Jesus. Life doesn't stop because you are finally on your way to the promised land. I'm on my way to see the king. How about you? Yay! You come out of that water and you just feel it. You can even picture a dove coming and resting above your head. But then life happens. Let's continue in the story. Now it was told in verse 5, it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with boldness. What did they go out with? They were ready to fight. Oh, we've seen our God right after the miracle. You call up, you've paid the money for the phone card, and you call up, and the phone, the sound on the phone is clear, and you're over 10,000 miles away from home, and you say, Did the money get through? And they're like, Yes. Thank you. The money went through. I was able to buy food. And you feel like nothing can stop you because your God is great. He set you free. But ah, what you can't see is the chariots are coming. So the Egyptians in verse 9 the Egyptians pursued them, all the horses. How many? All of the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them camping by the sea beside Pihataroth before Baal Zephon. Verse 10, and when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. Some of your versions say sore afraid, and that's what sore means. I used to think that they were so afraid that they broke out with something. But when some of us stress out, that's exactly what we do, don't we? We itch, we scratch, we break out. When you're very afraid, stress. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out before the Lord. What did they do? What did they do, church? What did they do? They cried out before the Lord. When you get caught in a tough situation, what do you normally do? You cry out to Jesus. There are many people, when they're in a life situation and they haven't talked to God in years, they at least know I don't know if I believe in this God, Pastor Donna, but I'm in a tough situation. I'm going to pray. My grandma taught me how to pray. I'm going to try it out because what could, hurt? what could it hurt? He cried out in prayer. Their eyes looked up and they saw the army coming. Now, I've got the sea over here. There's a cliff over here and there's an army back there. Um, God, what's the deal? Um, excuse me, you just did all of these miracles to get me out. Okay, what's going on? I, I need some help. The bill is due. 
She needs a surgery. She's back in the home country. I've got to get money over there, and now the internet's not working. I've got to go to the stores, go to Western Union, and now it's too late because one grocery store is closed that I'm trying to use the Western Union in to get money overseas for the emergency surgery. Then I drive to the next store, and now their computers are down. Come on, God, what's going on? I, I'm not getting this. They cried out before the Lord in verse 10. And so God said in verse 11, then God said, wait, wait a minute, verse, ele verse 11, wait a minute, hold up. Then God said, then they said to me, wait, wait, I, I'm confused. Where's God's response? Where, where, where's God's, okay, they cried before the Lord. They, they cried, they cried. They didn't say, they, 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 the, it was coming out of the nose, out of the eyes. They were crying before the Lord. Where, where's the response? I don't see one. Don't you love it when God does that? Come on. I mean, I'm praying like I'm supposed to. That's what we do. We get in a tough situation. We pray. God answers. When you, anything you ask in my name, I will grant you. Hello. That's what the word of God says. Come on. I don't hear you. So what do we do when God is silent? When he doesn't say anything and the tears are flowing and the no and everything's coming out what happens oh but some of us do exactly what goes on in verse 11 then they said to Moses because there were no graves in Egypt have you taken us away to die in the wilderness why have you dealt so with us to bring us out of Israel in Egypt is this not the word that we told you saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we die in the wilderness. I at least could have died in my own house. I mean, come on, what is this? What am I supposed to do, jump into the ocean to get away from them? Moses, what do you have to say for yourself? Translation. God, I can't see you, and my arms are too short to box with you, so I'm going to go to the next best person, the people of God. The people who share with me the oracles of Christ, the people who teach me, the people that are faithful. And so, if I'm young and I'm going through a situation, I decide that there is no God because I prayed for grandmother to be healed. She died, so now I don't believe that there's a God. No, mm -mm. I tried. I cried before God. Nothing happened. No, N never mind. Forget him. Or I've been a Christian for too long, and I know that there's a God. I'm much more mature than a 16-year-old. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer my anger from God to someone else, maybe my spouse, maybe my children maybe my co-workers but I'm angry at God and someone is going to feel it and they're going to know it this is how we behave whether we know it or not because we can't pull him down out of heaven and shake him what are you doing Oh, no, we can't do that. So we'll go to the next best thing, the rest of you. And so since I'm upset about what I'm dealing with in my personal life because my tears have created a flood in my life and the tears are now pouring out of my fingernails, I'm going to let all of you have it. Maybe you've been in that situation. Maybe some of you are going through that right now. Hmm. Verse 13, and Moses said to the people, 
do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stop it. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. I was going to entitle the sermon a phrase that I knew that some people wouldn't like to see in the bulletin, so I didn't name it that. But he's basically telling them to be quiet or, you know, stop talking. <laughs> Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Here is the issue. When I'm going through a situation, when I'm crying, I, I don't feel like standing still because I want the problem fixed and I need it fixed now. Parents, when you tell your child to clean up the room and you have had it up to here because you've told them to clean it up not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, Oh, come on. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Not five. Now you had it. You don't want to be still. You want action now. Okay? You've been praying to God for months, weeks, days with tears in your eyes. They're after you. The bill collectors and your phone is ringing every five seconds. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And you're like, God, come on, I'm working, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, so help me out. Absolutely nothing. Hmm. Moses has this kind of faith, and he's standing before this huge multitude trying to encourage them in their pain, in their fear. He says, the Lord will fight for you. Just shh. The Lord will fight for you. Just For those of us who try to work and fix everything that happens in life, it's hard to go into a situation or to be caught in a situation and just God finally responds and the words that come out of his mouth in verse 15, and the Lord said to Moses, to who? To who? No, no, no. I, I, no, it's got to be the children of Israel. Pastor Holland, it's, it's, it's the children of Israel, right? It's the children of Israel, right? It says who? Moses. Okay. He says, why do you cry to me? Oh, what? No, that's not... That doesn't give me peace. What are you saying? Why am I crying to you? Tell the children to go forward. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, no. He says, why are you crying? Get that hanky out. I'm sorry. We don't have time for tears today. <laughs> because God is cooking up a miraculous thing for his people. Time to wipe those tears away and move forward. I didn't say it wasn't going to hurt. I didn't say it was going to be easy. Take out the hex. Why are you crying to me? I already told you what it was going to be like. I told you they were coming to get you. Hello? Didn't Jesus? Did, did, hold on. 
was a, for, I, I read somewhere in the Bible that it said those who desire to live a godly life will face persecution. Oh, okay. So when I face persecution and it doesn't feel good, I'm crying. There, there comes a time where I still have to go forward. Life must be lived, right? Okay, so when there's an army after you, you're probably not going to be saying to your kids, all right, kids, let's go. No, but you still got to go forward, right? You may be in pain. You may still be hurting. Your life may be one series of horrible events after the next one. But the one thing I came here to tell you today is once you have stood still, get that handkerchief out, dab it, keep it in your hand because there's more, there are more tears coming. But you've got to move forward on the command of your Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Moses, in his leadership form, I believe he was just fed up with all of this. He's like, I've got faith, but the people around me, they don't. They, they don't. Pastor Donna, the, I, I'm trying, but the people around me, they don't. And now it's getting to me. <laughs> now it's getting to me. Uh-oh, <laughs> this is not good. And God tells me, no, you need to tell them. You need to tell them to stop whining to me. No. God's like, you, why are you crying? I told you I was about to do something big to glorify myself. And maybe through your tears and through your pain, God is about to do something in your life that is about to glorify him through your family, in your life, and in your situation. That when people see what he has done, that they want to know who he is. But you got to go forward. Get the hanky out. And I have a couple of hankies, okay? Because hankies are useful for lots of things. Because we don't just cry one time in our lives, do we? There will be tears on another occasion. And we will cry. And we will hurt. And we will move forward. I said we will cry. We will hurt. And we will move forward. Amen? Because we are headed somewhere, aren't we? This is not our home. Jesus said in my father's house are many rooms. Somebody didn't like that when they translated, so they said many mansions. Okay? He said, in my father's house are many rooms. I've got a room being set up by Jesus himself. He's, he's buffing the gold in that house. There is marble being polished so it can sparkle ever so more for you and I. And guess what? We don't have to send money home for that house. Hello? It's been paid for. Okay? Because when Jesus died on the cross, it was purchased. And then when he resurrected, he gave the deed to every single one of us who wanted one. Giving out deeds like lollipops. Come on, man. That's to make you happy. Free deeds to an everlasting home and everlasting life. And all you've got to do is say yes and move on. Oh, please. Give me some tears. Okay. It doesn't feel like that when you're going through. I recognize that. There's always a cynic in the room. I get it. But you keep the promised land in sight. Remember how they were walking out of the promised land, ready for a battle? Then when the battle came to them, they <laughs> God continues in verse 16. He says, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it 
and the children of Israel will go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I indeed will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, so that I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gained honor for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the angel of God, and the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it came, <coughs> pardon me, between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. Thus it was a cloud and darkness to the one and it gave light by night to the other, so that one did not come near the other all that night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went in the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning watch that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of the Egyptians and he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, not so much as one, not so much as one, not so much as one of them remained. That's my God. You thought your problem was super big, didn't you? Let God get a hold of it and see what happens. Get your hanky out. Dab and move on. Watch God work in your situation. Stand still and take that hanky out, dab it, and move on. God has got a miracle waiting for each and every one of you. But the children of Israel, in verse 29, had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Thus Israel saw a great work which the Lord had done in Egypt. So the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord and spoke, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed greatly. The house and the horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. 
The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. His chosen captains also were drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom like a stone. Your hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy in pieces. And in the greatness of your excellent, you have overthrown those who rose against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the blast of your nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright like a heap. The depths congealed in the hearts of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. You in your mercy have led forth the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. The people will hear and be afraid. Sorrow will take hold of the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom will be dismayed. The mighty men of Moab trembling will hold, take hold of them. All of the inhabitants of Canaan will melt away. Fear and dread will fall on them by the greatness of your arm. They will be still a stone till your people pass over, O oh Lord, whom you have purchased. You will bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O oh Lord, which you have made for your own dwelling, the sanctuary, O oh Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Go forward. Take that hanky out. Dab your face and move all forward so you can sing your song. Some of you need to. Some of you in this room are facing trials that the others of us can't even, we couldn't deal with. We wouldn't know how to handle it. And God has allowed you to carry this burden, but you're not alone. There's a deed in the hand of Jesus with nail scars but with resurrection power. And that resurrection power means that you can get up from the death that's going on in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit and through Christ Jesus, and you can live. I want to know if there's anyone in this room who wants to live today. Is there anybody who wants to live today? You don't have tomorrow to worry about. You just have today. Is there anyone who, who needs power? Do you need special prayer in your life? Is there anyone who's been playing church? Now, see, I know that some of us, when we were back in the country where we came from, we were very active in church. We were very, we were on time to church. We were active and we did everything. And now that we've been in the United States for a long time, We've let certain other things get in the way of our service, and we know, we know, we know we need to partner with the people of God and chip in where we can. Some of us have always lived in these great United States, and we need to stop playing around, and we need to 
join a body of people who are headed in that promised land direction. I wonder if there's anybody who wants to be a part of God's church. I wonder if there's anybody who wants to take a hold of that deed to brand new life, to everlasting life, and be baptized. This is your time. The pressure is on the Holy Spirit. And you know whether or not you should say yes. If you feel that pressure welling up inside of you right now, don't fight it. Some of you may just need to change your membership to the Portland SDA Church. Some of you have just been around and you haven't just gone through the process. I wonder if there's anybody who wants to do that. So you have green cards in front of you. They should be in your bulletins, I believe. Number one, for number one, I want you to mark number one if you would like to change or make your membership a part of the Portland SDA Church. You've been a member somewhere else and you want to be a member here. Okay? The Portland SDA Church. I want to be a member of this church. I want to transfer my membership. It's still out in Ohio or Texas at another SDA church and I need to get it here. Number one. Number two. For number two, if you would like to prepare for baptism, I want you to mark number two and just write baptism, okay? If you don't know how to spell baptism, just put the letter B, okay? Can you do that? Number two, if you want to prepare for baptism, number two, baptism or just put the letter B. Number three, You've got a situation going on in your life and you want somebody to pray for it. Write that in number three. Number one, if you want to transfer your membership from some other Adventist church out where you just let it languish and you want to have it here at Portland SDA. Number two, if you want to prepare for baptism Number three, you need special prayer. You can hand those to Pastor Donna or myself and make sure you fill out your contact information, telephone number, email, address, any way we can contact you. Please make it so that we can read it as best you can. Give us the phone number where you're actually answering the phone. This is your time. As the praise team is coming up, we're going to give you just a minute to fill that up. Please, take out that handkerchief, dab it, and move on. Stand together as we sing. Take 
May God grant you peace. May he give you the knowledge of knowing that he is still on the throne, that your circumstance is not bigger than he is. May he strengthen you from minute to minute, from hour to hour, from day to day, as he gives you grace and mercy. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be here as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen.